Yeah, but it's because we understood what the barriers were. Why aren't 96% of the people able to open an account? And then you understand it's because they keep their money under the mattress. Mm. And then you understand what is the competitiveness mm -hmm. of the mattress. Welcome back. I hope you're loving the conversation. I know you've been chilling for this episode, so we are, <laughs> we've, we've entered such an interesting part of, of the life journey. But if you're catching us here, go back and, you know, hear the story from the beginning. Because the dots connect. Uh, you, you get to under, you have more context and understanding of where we are at because of the history of the story. So, um, Mary, what I wanted to find out from you uh, just before, from the last episode was the history of of this uh, phenomenon called Equity Bank. But let's start it from the, give, give teach us, uh, educate us. Mm. Okay, thank you, Richard. Equity has an interesting history, and um, how it came up was, um, in a way, it's tied to the history of the banking industry in Kenya. Oh. Because uh, what happened is that traditionally we had uh, the mainstream commercial banks and the business model was such that for you to open an account, you needed uh, to, to pay what we call an account opening balance. Mm. Typically, that would have been like 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. That was the typical ask from the bank for you to open. And then the banks would also charge a ledger fee mm. um, monthly. And then you had to maintain a certain amount in the account for it to remain operational. We are also looking at a time when there were some restrictions on withdrawals. Like when I was at the university, I like telling this story. I used to I, I used to bank with Post Bank, mm. and the Post Bank was basically the bank for students. Mm. And the rule was, if you withdraw today, the next time you can withdraw is seven days away. <laughs> you can't believe this used to happen <laughs> in somebody's lifetime. <laughs> so there were those restrictions. You open, you do. So one time I had my brother's pre-wedding um, and, and I, was, I, I had a duty because of the organization and all. So I went to Post Bank on a Saturday like today and I withdrew the money I had in the, or I needed. Mm. And then I entered a bus number seven, to go to Pan Africa Hotel to check on the, the cooking mm. because the cooking was being done there. Mm. My cousin was working there at that time. Now, I'm not sure what happened in the bus, but by the time I got to Pan Africa, I had no coin <laughs> <laughs> on me. <laughs> Welcome to Nairobi. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> so I'm thinking, my brother's pre-wedding is tonight. I have no coin on me. So I decided to go back to post bank. And I went to the inquiry desk and then told the guy there, excuse me, uh, can you help me? I was here just some minutes ago, but I've lost the money I withdrew. Can you allow me, because I still have some money in the account, to withdraw a little bit more? So the guy looked up and pointed to a notice on the wall. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Withdrawals will only be allowed after seven days. Can you read? And this is your money. And it's my money, you know? So those were the peculiar issues. So what then transpired was that those conditionalities that banks had placed on customers mm. were not in tandem with the reality of the customers. Okay. Because I mean, if for instance you have a business 
uh, or you are a low cadre staff, so you're on a salary, mm. if the bank tells you to keep or to bring 10,000 at a go for you to open an account, what does that mean? I cannot afford it mm. because maybe my salary is 10,000. Mm. This is the salary I'll pay my rent, I'll buy my food, food for my family, I will, and all those other requirements. So if you tell me to give you 10,000, where will I get it from? Mm. Or if I'm a trader who deals with, you know, anything, and you can talk about a vegetable vendor or a bitumba vendor or something, what is the take home per day? Mm -mm. They are probably making a thousand. And this thousand is what will buy unga for the family and all those things. So if you tell them, give me 10,000 to open an account, even if they wanted to, they will never be able to get that kind of money to give you, to open for them. So what did that mean? It meant that in the 90s, we only had 5% of the bankable population banked. Of the bankable population. And bank. bankable here means that I'm earning an income of some sort, either through employment <laughs> or through a small trade or other business. 95% did not have, actually it was 96%, did not have bank accounts because the conditions were too tough for them. What then that meant so is that... So how are they getting their salaries? They would, uh, some of them would get their salaries in cash. But mm. you remember some of them, the traders, it's a cash trade. Mm. Mm. So they just make some money. And that is where now we say that, where do they bank? And they bank under the mattress. Under the mattress, yes. And mattress here might mean physically the mattress yes. <laughs> or a tin mm. or another place. Mm. But they don't take it to the bank. They kept, that was the reality. They kept their money with them. Within, exactly, uh, yes. yes. That was the reality. So 96% were bankable but not banked. Now, equity was started in a village in central Kenya. And that was just because the, the farmers would get some produce money from, you know, the cooperatives and all that. And they would get paid by checks. But then they don't have bank accounts. So they, they used to, uh, the, the founder chairman of equity is from that region. Mm. And uh, uh, Mr. Peter Munga. Mm -hmm. And so they would take for him the checks because he used to work with the government that time. Uh, so the farmers figured out, or oh, because this guy works with the government, he knows how to convert these checks into cash. So they will bring all the checks to him and tell him, okay, we don't care what you do, just give us the cash. And then he decided, ah, I don't think I want to do this for too long. It's too cumbersome. So that is where the idea of starting a bank that really understands the needs of these people came. Wow. And that is how equity was founded. But because they will not have the 250 million yes. to get a bank license, they opted to do a building society. That is why it was a building society. Wow. So it will still be able to do savings and loans. loans. So after 10 years, the business model did not sort of do well because they were not able to grow the business. They were not able to, uh, to create a strong brand because you know also for banking, you really need to have a strong brand that people can trust. Mm. So it was technically insolvent in 10 years. It was started in 1984. By about 1993, it was technically insolvent. It did have non-performing loans. 54%. More, That's more high. than half of the loans That's were non-performing. The liquidity was way below the requirement by Central Bank of 20%. It was at 5%. Um, it was making losses. Shareholders' funds were totally uh, eroded. Wow. So it was not doing well. It was on the deathbed. It was on the deathbed. Yeah. Actually, the central bank wanted to close it, but they were given one more chance to reopen on condition that they made some changes. So at this point, the business model was changed. And they said, how can we target this 96% mm. 
which is not banked. And that is when the microfinance model was put into place. Just hold on. Let me just ask this question. Mm. The whole of the people who had banks account was just 4% of the of the bankable population. population. Yes, that was While the reality. all these other banks. Yes. They just had 4% of the market. Yes. Because also the banks for you for you to open an account they will typically ask you to be introduced by an existing bank account holder. Wow, wow. wow now wow. if you only have 4% of the population banked how likely are you to know a person who has a bank account in that particular bank. Wow. So banking was actually very elitist. It was for Ex either the top corporates or a very few top employees. And therefore we're also saying yes. banks, the physical location of banks was not in every county. No, they were not accessible, even the infrastructure. Mm. And that is why you can see one of the things that uh, we did as equity was to quickly grow the branch network so that we are accessible throughout the country. We have about 200 branches in the country right now. To, okay. So that you are close to the people. Okay. So let's that go was, back to now that where, where you had left off. Yeah, so that was so that was the challenge. And the challenge for equity was and the opportunity, let me call it the opportunity, mm. was to figure out how to reconfigure the business model to become more relevant to this 96% who are banking with the mattress. Mm, mm, mm. And, and, you know, we talked about the barriers. It's account opening uh, balance, account maintenance balance, ledger fee, recommendations, even a photo, the requirement that come with a passport photo. It was a big issue. Wow, wow, wow. Because, this I mean... This is not digital at this time. <laughs> no, you had to actually bring a photo yes. to open an account. Now, now, can you picture yourself? Your home is in Te one of Tetu. that, in Tetu. <laughs> no, Tetu, by the way, is okay because we, we, I can walk to the town, to Nyeri town. Yes, okay. So we are not too rural. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but you can imagine if you had to travel like 50 kilometers, mm. like some of the customers have to, to get to the town. Wow. And then you come to the town, go to the <coughs> studio, take a photo. That time it was not like this one so you're doing here. You had to do something called <laughs> develop it. <laughs> washing. In yes. Kiku, you used to call it. Washing. In Aoshua. <laughs> so it wasn't easy. So you go take the photo and then you are told, come after two weeks or yes. three weeks to check whether it's ready. Now, when you get the photo, then that's when now you go to the bank and then it takes another few days. So you'll make <coughs> about three or four trips ah, yeah, 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 to yeah. just get the documentation right. So equity said, you don't need to come with a photo. So there was a white wall. Take a photo and it's uploaded onto the system. Can I ask this question? Yeah. Mm. Why wasn't the, the banks that had the 4% mm. Why didn't they consider this 96% a target audience? I can't answer on their behalf, but there are two scenarios. And the first one is they did not really understand the market okay. and the needs of the market. And they probably did not also understand how the people did their business. Mm. Because, you know, for you to innovate, you must first of all understand what the gap is, and how the people operate. Okay. So like, and that is where equity came in and said, we are understanding that if I uh, earn a salary of 5,000, I am not possibly able to give you a balance of 10,000. Uh -huh. So equity said, Ata kama ni shilingi moja, even if you have only one shilling to bank, bring it. Come with your documents, we'll take a photo of you and open an account for you. You don't need to put a minimum, just bring the money as it comes. You made it extremely simple Very for easy. them to open up Very accounts. Easy. You yes. removed the minimum balance. What about yes. ledger fees? The ledger fee was scrapped. No ledger fee. Uh, no account opening balance. No minimum balance. No ledger fee. Compete with the mattress. Because now, remember, ah, yeah, your, your competition... <laughs> 
Compete your competition is a mattress. Yes, <laughs> your competition is a mattress, not another bank. You know, Mary, I'm going to take this one so slowly mm. because I don't want us to think this is norm. You are saying, was there anybody's... This, banks used to make so much money on ledger fees. Banks could take your your minimum deposit that you're not allowed to withdraw and go and in, uh, make more money on it. Because it got it. So you guys were completely changing the model on how banks make money. Yeah, but it's because we understood what the barriers were. Why aren't 96% of the people able to open an account? And then you understand it's because they keep their money under the mattress. Mm. And then you understand what is the competitiveness mm -hmm. of the mattress. And the mattress does not ask a ledger fee from you. <laughs> <laughs> it does not ask for a minimum. Hata ukiweka mia moja ni sawa. Utatoa mia moja. Utatoa mia moja. So you understand who your competitor is. Okay, I get that. And at that point, the competitor for equity was the mattress. Wow. So once we understood those barriers and the competitiveness of the mattress, it was very easy to configure the business model accordingly. Okay. And we told the customers, just come. Come with your documents. We'll take the photo. Uh, deposit whatever you have. Take out your money whatever time you want. Even if you come in the morning and you want your money in the afternoon, it's okay so long as the money is in the account. It's your money. Manage it the way you want. Why should I tell you to come after seven days? Yeah. And yet I'm not the one who is making this money. I'm not sure what you do to make this money. Come for it if you have to come 10 times a day so long as your balance can support that. That's how the business of equity grew. Okay, let me ask this question. Mm -hmm. I was in Zambia the other day, mm -hmm. and I was shocked on the banks, hearing that banks close at midday sometimes. Did you have operating hours that were different from the culture here? Yes, equity started longer banking hours. So whereas other banks were closing at 1, equity started, I think initially it was 3 p.m., and then 4 p.m., I think now is 4.30. Mm. So the hours were changed earlier and later. Mm. And that was also a serious attraction to okay. the customers because it gives them more flexibility. Mm. You know, especially those who are working in offices and they, they have limited time. Okay. So those kind of innovations are the ones that really attracted the market. How was equity... Because this is so radical, mm. let me just be honest, and... Mm. and and, and you have to move your mindset to that time yes. to understand that the, the radicalness of what equity was doing. Mm. What then was going to be the business model in which equity was going to make ROI? I mean, make, how are they going to make money? It was very simple. It was um, because now you have collapsed all the barriers volumes. to entry. Uh. It's high volumes, yeah. low margins. Uh. High volumes, low margins. And we said, we would rather have a million customers who each give us 10,000 yeah, 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 yeah. than one customer who, who gives give us? us 1 million. Yanni. But even that one who gives us 1 million is welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and you have so them. <laughs> we are not, uh, so we said it's an inclusive model. Mm. And we have everyone from the very top to the very entry level. Yeah. So you open it up and you have products and, and delivery channels for each and every category. So whether you are top executive, there's a product for you and yep. there's a delivery channel for you. Mm. We have the supreme branches where that category of customers is accommodated. Yep. But we also have products for those who are just entering small balances because our aim is to facilitate you to grow within your means. And imagine so we broke down all those barriers and that explains why equity grew the way it did. You know, I'm thinking mm. about you mm. getting somebody straight out of high school, mm. working with that person as they begin earning their first salary, mm. all the way until that person becomes a millionaire. He's with you. Yeah, because now you follow the lifestyle. So, and actually now it's not even from university because uh, we are also paying 
school fees. Um, flowers, f- f- uh, wings to fly. Yeah, we have the scholarships, mm-hmm. but even for those parents who pay school fees, we have products for them. Mm-hmm. So we are paying school fees. Some of the people who are our clients remember equity because they used to go to equity with their parent to process ah, the yeah, school yeah, fees yeah, payment. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they became used to the brand and they used to aspire. And then now they go to university, you have products for the university students, and then they leave university, and then it's a fast job. You have products for them, you have cards, you know, for them. And then after that, probably you are looking at, I'm now starting my young family, and now you have insurance for the family. Uh, you have uh, a mortgage when they want to buy a car mm-hmm. or a house. Mm. So you follow the lifestyle. I get it. Of the customer. So we always say now it is um, cradle to... Cradle to <laughs> the grave. <laughs> to the grave, yeah. That's what it is. Yes. yes. And you follow the customer through their lifestyle because the needs also change according to their circumstances. And that is how now the products are structured. Okay. Yeah. By the time Dr. James Mwangi is coming to meet you for the first time, mm. because this uh, one point, was it six million? USD, yeah, the, the, well, the 120 million the Kenya shillings yes, yes. has come in. What have these investors seen? In, they've seen that equities model is, is was it, a, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a grant, it was them investing into the company. It was them investing and they were investing because they have understood the potential for very significant growth. Mm. But partly it was also because they want to support that move you know, to financial inclusion. Yes. So there was that double-edged bank the model. They banked the unbanked. So they want to support that. Okay. But they can also see huge potential for growth. Yeah. Because, you know, you are looking at this highly fast-growing population and you can figure out these guys will need banking. Yes. And financial services at some point. Uh-huh. So it is the time for us now to prepare and, you know, prepare the networks, set out the outlets, invest in technology because we also did that at some point yes. after, just after that investment we, we invested in one of the top core banking systems mm. that anyone had ever invested in in africa i know its name to first uh, finaco yep yes by infosys yes. from india yes so that investment was also made and that was now to provide the platform to support the growth Mm-mm-mm-mm. yeah so let me just say also mm. As somebody who's tech savvy, so much is happening mm-hmm. at this crucial time called 2001, 2002. Mm. We're talking about the mobile money, which is a huge phenomenon, maybe coming in around that time, if I'm not wrong. Uh, uh, but then we're also talking about 2002 and change of regime. Yes. You, even, you even clearly mentioned it in terms of the hope. So by the time now, now we can continue with the story. because You've beautifully explained this history. I have understood it and I'm just like, wow. They, he was providing a solution mm. hence that birthed this mm. building uh, society. Mm. So by the time he's, um, uh, they're coming back to you and telling you, we need now your help, what does that mean now? Uh, or, 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 or let me just say, continue now from now that. Now to do the conversion. Yes. 